So a while ago, this lady right here asked the CEO of TikTok this question. Well, then why don't you let your eight-year-old child on TikTok? I have seen these news articles. I would like to address that. My kids live in Singapore, and in Singapore, we do not have the under 13 uh, experience. And after minutes of what clearly seemed as waffling, he simply said, no. You see, this even raises more questions than answers because this was a period when TikTok was facing serious allegations in the US and was on the verge of being banned. Those allegations are still there and most nations have actually went ahead to ban this platform. You probably already know TikTok is actually not used in its own home. Instead, they use a similar app called Douyin, which for me does not make sense. Or does it? I remember just seeing these videos like on my For You page about just like people saying like, oh, here's signs you may have this disorder. Like with rare mental health disorders after watching videos on the social platform. 18 year old Samantha Fridley says she was convinced she was suffering from one of those conditions. About 5.9% of TikTok users may have significant problematic use. Well, then why don't you let your eight-year-old child on TikTok? After a teenager died while trying to complete a challenge on TikTok, parents will be more aware about the dangers of TikTok. To turn away is very, very difficult. One sugary treat after another. In December 2016, a Chinese technology company called Pythons launched an app called Amy and nobody cared. A few months later, they would change the name of the app to Douyin, which basically means vibrating sound. Basically, the app was marketed as a video sharing social platform, kind of similar to Instagram and Facebook, both of which are actually banned in China. Later, Pythons would acquire an app called Musical.ly, which allowed creators to share short 15 second lip sync videos on the platform. Eventually, Pythons would end up closing Musical.ly and incorporating its best features into Douyin. And in 2018, Pythons would present to the world a more advanced version of Douyin called TikTok. Today, TikTok has over 1 billion monthly users, which is actually more than Twitter and Snap, with its worth said to be more than $75 billion. TikTok has grown to be a major powerhouse, and today, it is no secret that TikTok is the influencing force behind most trends across the world. Actually, we can say TikTok dictates the popular culture. And don't get me wrong, I understand the potential for creators to grow is very high on TikTok, and I also reckon there is a lot of content on TikTok that can be presumed as entertaining. However, trust you, ever since this app came around, the society has just changed forever. Something is just wrong, and I feel it's the high time we ask one question. Social media has become an integrated part of our life, and it's okay. However, it is now worse, far worse than a hobby. And according to studies, this eventually leads to reduction in attention span. This in return could lead to struggle in communication skills, relationship struggles, decline in academic performance, and eventually inability to practice reliable habits. And in case you think this is not bad enough, Cardinal University in 2021 published a journal stating that such individuals had a higher risk of falling into mental health related issues such as depression and anxiety. Even though this covers all social media platforms, here is why this video puts an eye on TikTok. We're looking at TikTok. We may be banning TikTok. TikTok seems to know you more than you know yourself. We wake up to the same reality and the same nightmare that Jessica and Lilia are gone. You know what they send you? All the nonsense that you see. They want you to see girls dancing, boys and girls dancing with each other, pranks upon your parents. New research shows sites like TikTok may have a negative impact on children's mental health. Their logarithm is designed to keep you engaged for as long as possible. In the late December of 2021, TikTok officially surpassed Google as the most visited domain name on earth according to Cloudflare. Even though TikTok officially became the epicenter of trends, 
U.S. lawmakers had concerns of the app potentially being a threat to national security. The U.S. government seemed concerned that Biden's may leak the U.S. user data to the Chinese government if at all the Chinese government forced them to. In other places such as India, TikTok was completely banned. However, there was another problem and potentially a bigger one. TikTok short clips have the ability to reach millions of users in a minute, and thus some of its strengths and challenges have led to tremendous damage within a short period of time. For example, the blackout challenge claimed over 20 children within a matter of months. These TikTok challenges range from innocent ones to more life-threatening and anywhere in between. These trends are now part of us and trust me, it gets to us when it gets dark. to 11 p.m. Kenya time, this host begins advertising, not clothes or shoes, but explicit videos of herself. In short, TikTok is a one-stop shop tailored with millions of suggested contents that you're supposed to digest. That explains why the app has been criticized for subjecting users, more specifically teenage girls, to viral content, facial and behavioral tics, which they have ended up to subconsciously imitate. You see, the app uses TikTok Live to subject its users to whatever they want you to see. And this is disturbing because it occurs without examining the age of users or whatever they are about to view. Yes, this is the reality of what this app has become and it cannot be denied. Now, for children aged 12 to 17, sexualized content could be of interest and watching such content even for a minute longer, he could be stuck in a loop of sexual fetish videos. This is how dangerous the algorithm of TikTok could prove to be. For example, while researching on this video, TikTok algorithm kept on bombarding my feed with similar content. Some earn their livelihood through TikTok Live. And now with a way to gift money to these broadcasters, they could probably go as far. What's more disturbing is that most of these broadcasters were underage girls being paid by a chatroom of seemingly old adult viewers intending to see them in compromising positions. Honestly, some accounts were ran by older women, but that just gets to show how much of a breeding ground it is for this skeptical and sickening behavior. It is undeniable that TikTok is honestly trying to moderate these inappropriate contents. At the rate at which the sexual exploitation economy is growing, I think the big question is, is this platform doing more harm than it is good? Notably, the app could be of immeasurable impact on our next generation. And that explains why China's own version of TikTok, Douyin, is different from the version they send to the rest of the world. For example, if you are a child under the age of 14 in China, Douyin is likely to show you the education content and clips of hardworking citizens. And yet, a child of the same age from the rest of the world, TikTok shows you crime, sex, drugs, vandalism, depression, and anxiety clips. Set aside the dangerous challenges, trends, medical concerns, misinformation, data security concerns, addiction accusations, falsified content, scamming, and the mental health question. And yeah, that's pretty much about it. If you found this video helpful, kindly consider giving it a like and subscribing to our channel. You're awesome and I hope to see you in the next one. Cheers!